from ages 12 to 17, I would always see this man. I named him Skinwalker, and I never knew why. It just felt right. This is my first time on X, but I have a story if you would like to hear it. Okay, here goes. I've always had an overactive imagination. I'm an artist, and I was diagnosed with ADHD as a child. Never medicated, though. So my mind was constantly everywhere, and I was always drawing and fucking around as a kid. My imagination would do terrible things to me sometimes, probably a result of watching horror movies at a young age. Scary shit lurked around every corner. But on one occasion, I knew it wasn't just my imagination. I was in sixth grade at the time, probably 12 or so, and I lived in a small, small town of a major highway. Like, seriously small. The only major thing in the town burnt to hell 20 years ago. Then, a kid died in the high school, so it was condemned. The only shit here was a cemetery, a lake, post office, gas station, all on about four blocks of town. Another strange thing about this town is the fact that in the early 1900s, it was booming. Now, it was a dusty little ghost town with about 40 people living there. People who never spoke or went outside. The only other kids were my best friends. And there were only three of us. And every morning we walked together to the bus stop. And none of us spoke on most mornings. One morning, it was more foggy than usual, but I remember it was cold and a little misty outside. My uncle, now deceased, grew up here and he always told me fucked up stories about this town. He told me to watch myself. That strange shit was going on here. But he was kind of a loony, so I didn't worry about him most times. This morning, though. This morning felt off. I wasn't too stressed because I knew the others would be walking up soon enough. And when they didn't, I started freaking out. And when I stood alone at the bus stop, my imagination started going wild. I was in the middle of imagining a set of eyes in the mist, when from about 10 feet away from me to the left, I remember seeing something walking. This, this was absolutely real. I remember every detail. It was a man, in shape and stature, but the way it walked seriously makes my bones numb slow and rhythmic, like it was floating. My 12-year-old eyes bulged out of my skull, and I remember freezing in terror. Good God, I can't even stop shaking while typing this. Then, he looked at me, fucking looked directly at me. The eyes, his eyes, they were so far apart, they were almost on the sides of his head, which was oblong. Like, I don't know, a sideways egg, but not that long. And he had a small nose in the center, absolutely hairless. No hair, just pale, dirty white skin, with crooked, jagged yellow teeth underneath a disgusting smile. I've seen a ton of creepypasta threads and heard almost exact descriptions of ghouls, and I've wondered if maybe they saw who or what I saw, but it's never the same. He didn't leave me until the headlights of the school bus came over the hill. Then, without taking his eyes off of me, he raised one hand and waved. But not like goodbye wave, more like a see you around wave. Then, walked slowly away from the spot he stood for what felt like an eternity. When the bus pulled up, I was crying. I don't know why, I don't remember what triggered it. But the driver had to call the school who called my mom, who came and picked me up. I tried telling her what I saw, but she didn't believe me. She said that it was probably just a guy in a mask fucking with me. I knew it wasn't. I know it wasn't, because for the next five years of my life, he was there, watching me, and almost enjoying our time together, like he was watching his favorite TV show. For the first few months, his appearance sent me into a terrible frenzy of crying and screaming, and my mom, who was single most of my childhood, worked second and third shifts to keep our house, so she was never there at night or afternoon to watch me. I never had anyone to tell. 
I was frightened and alone so much, but whenever I would see him, I would call my grandma and talk to her on the phone, hoping that he would see this and think I was talking to the cops or something. I don't know. I was 12 or 13. I would shift the blinds and watch TV and try not to think about it. He only would make appearances like once a week, so it wasn't an everyday kind of thing. Then, at some point, I remember that I realized he never came near me or touched me or anything. He just stood there, watching me, whether it be outside my windows or in the cornfield just beyond the fence to the playground at school. I remember I got used to him. And after a while, he was nothing more than scenery. And when I would go on trips or vacation or something, he wasn't there. It was only around this small town. On one instance, when I was about 15 or 16, I was on a walk with a friend of mine. We were walking near the edge of the town where the paved roads turn into gravel, and the cemetery sits next to the graveyard. When I saw Skinwalker, as I had taken to calling him, he was about 100 yards away leaning casually up against a gravestone. I asked my friend while keeping my eye on Skinwalker, Want to go into the graveyard? He was down, so we went in. It had become obvious to me that Skinwalker wasn't noticed by anyone other than myself. So it wasn't a shock that when I walked almost directly next to him, my buddy was oblivious. Shit. I remember that was the closest I'd ever been to him. He was so much more detailed this close. His skin. Christ, I'll never forget it. It was almost translucent. He wasn't just pale. He was old, and he was staring directly into my eyes. His eyes. They were green, not black, I remember. Green with a hint of yellow and brown. I remember he had pretty eyes, but they were so beady and far apart. I had forgotten all about my friend when he said, Why are you staring at that gravestone? I looked at him, and then Skinwalker. But he wasn't there anymore. Just an old weathered slab of tall concrete. I looked at it for a second. Then, I noticed the name. Blank, blank. 1846 to 1874. I paid no attention to this for a long time. Until I noticed that every time I was in the graveyard... There he was, same pose, same stone, watching me. One day, I was reading a book on the paranormal when I thought about something. Maybe he was just a ghost, and maybe he wanted me to help him. So, I came up with a plan. I rode my bike to the graveyard. I don't know why I rode a bike. At the time, I thought it might make a quicker getaway if he tried to get me or something. I don't know. Anyway... I approached him. Standing there as usual, I said, Can you hear me? He just looked, blank-faced. No? No response. If you need my help, tell me. Then he seemed to get angry. I don't remember exactly what happened. All I remember was that I ran. I ran and didn't look back until I was on my bike. And then when I got onto my bike, I turned. He was standing there. Still at the gravestone, with one arm stretched out to me. Like he was reaching for me. To come back. Or like he was sorry or something, I don't know. I didn't stick around for much longer to find out. I rode as fast as I could home. And that was the last time I saw him for a while. A few months went by and I started to get really anxious. Avoiding being alone, avoiding going inside after dark... I was so scared I would see him again, but at the same time, I felt bad, like I shouldn't have upset him. I felt sorry for him, I don't know. It's weird, but I felt like we were friends. I still feel like we were friends. The first time I saw him again was while I was riding the bus to school. I no longer had to walk to the bus stop though, I was in high school, but I know it was him. He was walking, or dancing down the sidewalk but it was only a quick glance he watched me go past him I knew that he knew I was on and that was it his appearance became less and less frequent until one night the last night I've ever seen him 
I was 17 years old and my mom had announced that we were moving. Things had gotten serious with her boyfriend and we were moving in with him. Our boxes were being packed and the house was on the market. It was about midnight and I was alone in the house as usual. I was drawing in my living room. I had my supplies laid out in front of me and I was going to town on the paper when I saw something move out of the corner of my eye. It was him. But this was a first. He was in my house. My first reaction was to scream. He took a step back. I remember this as being a strange moment. I was quiet and he seemed scared. We watched each other for a moment. Then I realized I had nothing to fear and I went back to drawing. He moved about for a moment and wound up standing behind me. It was like he wanted to watch me draw. So I remember letting him. He moved himself in front of me. He stood there, looking not at my sketches, but at me. I'm not sure how long this lasted, but at some point, I realized he must have wanted me to draw him. So I did. I started slowly, but eventually, it was normal. I just sat completely silent, drawing this being. This fucked up thing that had followed me for damn near five years. And when I was done... I held my notebook up. He seemed to be happy. He seemed to be completely ecstatic, actually. His smile seemed bigger and his eyes seemed more kind. I'm pretty sure I smiled too. He liked it. I have absolutely no idea how long we stayed that way, but eventually, he turned away from me and walked into another room. And then, he was gone. Forever. My mom and I moved and went on with our lives. I'm 20 now and living on my own. And I wish with everything inside of me, I didn't leave that notebook with my mother because it's probably in storage somewhere now. I wish I could show you guys that drawing, but it's not here at my apartment. So, I did this for you all. Here he is. His image forever burned into my skull. I would also like to say this. Every year since I've moved back, I go back to that gravestone and I leave flowers. Every year I've hoped to see him standing there and I plan on doing this until I die. Shit X, that's my story. Few people know it and even fewer believe me. I expected to be scared shitless, I ended up with feels. Summer, 2013. Decide that it's time to kill coyotes for that sweet, sweet fur. Grab my bare bones basic AR-15 I got for cheap. I like the way AK slings Aphex, so I get it a sling point to put on the barrel. Sling it on my right side around my neck, messenger bag style. Take my ATV up to a cabin on the mountain. Take the key to my ATV, start looking around. I had been throwing squirrel and rabbit guts into the woods and shit to bring predators around. Check my bait. It's all gone. Keep getting a strange feeling. Guy who lives on the mountain just down the road leaves in his car just as I decide I should look around in the woods. Every time I step, I keep thinking I hear another footstep shuffling through the grass and brush. See a stick figure shape looking thing at a distance a little bit downhill from me. Wave at it. It slips behind a tree. Okay, goodbye. Walk back up to the cabin. Decide to sit around and drink for a while. Start hearing coyote yelps and shit in the distance. Get my gat ready to blast a couple foos. Sit with the lights off on the porch and nothing comes by. Then, the yelping turns into a distant... Help me! Look over to the neighbor's house and the lights are off. It doesn't click that he left... Get up and listen. Help me. Help me. Fuck. He broke his leg and is stuck in the woods with coyotes or some shit. Get close enough to the woods to tell it's on an ATV trail. Decide to take my ATV and AR. Driving towards the person saying help me when I come to a U-shaped dip in the path. Don't hit my brakes. Just coast down it. I hear something right in front of me on the trail scream. Help me! 
and I freak my shit and try to turn. Flip my ATV and black out for a minute. Wake up under the ATV with it pinned on top of me. Sit still and wait for my eyes to adjust. Start feeling around. Find my left leg is pinned under the ATV. Try pushing it, but I can't get it off. It's like it got a hundred pounds heavier in a couple seconds. The sling around my neck tells me I still have a rifle. Drag it to me, realize my arm is bleeding in the meantime. Check over the gun. The handguard is fucked and the stock is cracked, but it appears to still function. I've got 30 rounds to keep me safe until the night's over, or someone finds me. Sit and listen closely to the sounds of the forest. Before I hear something shuffling in the grass, that silence is everything. It's dead quiet. I don't think I've ever felt more fear than I have at this moment. I hear it shuffling around. Help me. Help me. Don't know if I should respond or sit in silence. It's shuffling gets closer. Something appears over the ATV, just like if you had fallen at a bar and the bartender looked at you funny. It looked like it was nine foot tall, frozen solid, twiddle my fingers and reach for my gat. Just bring it to my shoulder and sit there pointed at whatever the fuck it is. Don't want to look at it because fuck that. Help me. I hear it climbing over the ATV, looking away still but something grabs my face. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Mind is blank. Looking for triggerfinger.x. Not found. Would you like to delete the shortcut? It slowly moves my head over. I'm face to face with this thing, and it's looking me in the eyes. It looked like how almost everyone describes them. Gollum that had done crack and carved up its face with sunken cheeks and deep eyes. To this day, I've never smelled anything quite as worse as the breath from that thing feel the flash hider on my AR bump into something. Remember, I had it aimed at the thing. Brain reboots. Scream as loud as I can. It screams back. Start yanking, not pulling or squeezing, the trigger as fast as I can. Gun is going off. My ears are starting to ring. It grabs my hair and starts slamming my head into the ground as fast as it can. Still pulling the trigger as fast as I fucking can. It rips the fucking gun from my hand and starts beating me with it. It's still screaming as loud as it fucking can while beating me over the head with my own gun. Lights start flickering through the woods. About to black out when I hear something louder than the screaming. I swear, I saw the thing's head fly open. It drops my gun, screams like a child that's just been shoved in an oven, and runs for it. Drops my gun ten feet from my head. Lights getting closer. Don't know if I'm dying or being saved. Anon? Anon, hold on. Something's tugging my arm. Look over. It's the guy who lived down the road. He's got a huge revolver. We're talking a Magnum Research BFR here. Blackout. Wake up in a hospital. Had a fuck ton of stitches in my head. When I get out, I ask my neighbor what he saw that night. Replies with, A bear. We get them often up here. Not entirely convinced that I was nearly beaten to death with my own gun by a bear. Just want to share a story by Aunt I.C. I don't really have an explanation as to what happened. I have ideas, but here is the story. I'm a freshly graduated high school student and on my way to college. During my senior year, I had a job working for my grandfather as a farmhand. Well, more or less a farm manager. He would give me instructions on what to do to the farm without him being there, most commonly feeding the cows. It was early November, and at this moment in time, baseball practice started after school, and it would last from 3.25 to 5.30. And by that time, the sun was almost down when I arrived at work and started getting ready. One day, I had gotten dressed and filled up the buckets, and I fed the first farm when I realized I didn't have a key to the other farm. Frustrated, I was forced to pick up two buckets at a time and walk them from the fence to the feed troughs, a good 40-yard walk. While walking, I was trying to keep myself upbeat and just started to whistle. No real pattern or tune, but 
something that I came up with. And when I came back and put the last buckets in the bed of the truck, I heard something from my neighboring property. It was whistling. Strange, I thought. No one lives anywhere near that property, and it sounded very close. I rationalized it as a mockingbird or something and went on with life. The next couple of days I didn't whistle, but the whistling continued, and slowly over those few days, it got clearer and clearer until it just sounded like regular whistling, and eventually, it got louder. When I had first heard it, it was very faint. I almost missed it over the crunching of me walking to my truck. The last days in those few, I kind of became accustomed to the whistling, and kind of expected it. And when one day it didn't come, I was a little disappointed. This time I had brought the key, and I walked up to the gate and started fiddling with my keys when I dropped them into the grass. I said damn it when I dropped them. I squatted down and started to search for them, when I heard a very faint sound coming from the other property. A low groan slash gurgle, and it was getting louder. At this point, I wasn't scared, but more curious as to what was going on over there. I left my truck parked across from the property and walked a few feet down the road and hopped the fence of the property that I heard the sounds. The land in there goes straight uphill and is heavily wooded all throughout, and the further you go up, the more and more dense it gets. Looking back now, I made a few big mistakes that could have gotten me hurt. As I walked up the hill, I would occasionally hear the gurgle. It was far up the hill, so still as faint as it was before. As I walked, a bad smell started to hit my nose. A weird mixture of garbage and wet dog or something. I heard something as I was about to crest the hill. Yeah, man. A very dry, low, and quiet, distorted damn it came from a couple yards in front of me. It sounded like a 60-year-old smoker said damn it really slowly, and I automatically thought someone was on our property. Somewhat angry and paranoid now, I started to move slower. I didn't want this guy to hear me before I could see them. I kept going and I stopped and listened when I heard another sound. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. This guy was slowly saying damn it normally, not long and drawn out in that eerie way as if he didn't know English. I sat down on this log, kinda listening, trying to figure out what I should do about this person. He kept saying damn it over and over, and I noticed that his tone was getting higher and his inflection was changing. And it hit me. This guy was perfectly mimicking me. My tone, inflection, literally everything. He even mimicked my frustration when I said it. Pissed and kind of scared now, I got up and started to crest the hill. I flicked on my flashlight on my phone. Hey, this is private property. I was cut off mid-sentence. As I came over the hill, the light barely illuminated, a naked figure squatting just a couple yards in front of me. His eyes were illuminated by the faint glow of my flashlight. I automatically felt that something was wrong. This wasn't a regular person. His neck was longer than normal, and when I came up the hill, he winched his neck and snapped his head to look at me without moving. His eyes were too big, and his head was large and slender. He was squatted in a ballerina-type squat. I looked at his body. He was very skinny. His ribs were showing through his skin. There was a short silence, and like a robot, the man turned in the leaves and slowly stood with his hands next to his side. I was debating on if this was even a person. It was far too tall to be a person. Damn it, it said in my voice. I turned and sprinted down the hill. It didn't feel like I was running, but more that my legs were just going through the motions. I didn't look back before I got to the fence, and when I hopped it, I got in my truck and sped away. Sadly, I still work at that farm, but I've never told anyone this story, not even my grandfather. I've only heard the whistling a few more times since then. I'm not really a believer in the paranormal, and I really try to find explanations for weird shit. 
and I believe that this was just a weird person. But I really don't know. Sorry for the wall of text, but I thought X would enjoy a personal experience. <laughs>